This video is about harvesting the garlic today and I'll show you a little bit of my wife's lavender harvest also in a second. So this morning before it got sunny out I decided to go out and uh, check the garlic. I figured it was about time to pick it. Uh, you know it was starting to die back a little bit. You can see the bottom couple of leaves on it are all uh, turning brown and stuff. So I went out there with a pitchfork to you know, just see if it was time to dig and turned out that it was. Um, and it's like I just could not believe uh, the size of the heads. Um, each of these clothes was just, some of them were the size of baseballs. It was unbelievable. We have never ever had garlic like this before. I'm guessing that probably it's the mild winter. We had an extremely mild winter this past year and the garlic uh, must have gotten a really good start in the fall when I put it in. And then it must have got a real early start in the springtime when it was cold out. And it, it's just amazing. We just um, have never had garlic like this before. Now, many people ask me what type of garlic that I grow. And I have no idea. All I say is it's tractor supply garlic. I got a couple clothes on clearance at tractor supply years ago. I don't know, maybe 8, 10 years ago. And I just keep replanting it every year. And it keeps coming back, and uh, so it's a uh, apparently it's some type of a soft neck garlic because it it doesn't grow those scapes, I guess they call them. Um, so I'm I'm thinking that this is a, a soft neck type garlic, which actually is supposed to last longer and um, store better. And you can see I think it was about 50 bulbs that I put in in the fall, a couple of old uh, cloves that were left over. And every year you just save your best looking uh, bulbs of garlic and break them up and plant them in the fall. And you get you get a new batch in the following spring like this. Holy Look at the size of that thing. I've, I've just never seen garlic with a root system like this or um, just the size of the cloves that are on it. It's unbelievable. I, f I figured that they'd be half this size at most. So I'm, uh, I'm extremely pleased with this garlic harvest. And you can see it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. And they do have it planted fairly close together in this uh, it's about a 42-inch diameter raised bed there. And about a foot deep of uh, compost. And this is the um, compost that I made. This is the older type compost. And it does take a pitchfork to get them out where those roots are just, you just can't yank them out. And you don't want to yank the stems off them yet because you still have to dry them. And the stems really do help uh, dry them out in the future. So some, of, I mean, you can see some of the, uh, some of the heads are really tiny too. But what I'm calling tiny year, this year, are actually my normal size heads that I grow. So, um. This just uh, really did amaze me because I had no idea what was in the ground until this morning. And uh, it definitely definitely was time to harvest it. If it had been left any more, probably the heads would have started getting a little bit larger. And the skin on the outside gets thin and they just start falling apart on you. And they're just not right. They won't store. Uh, I speed it up here a little bit. And you know, it took a couple minutes to get it all dug out and... Um, and like I said, I'm just really amazed at it. And there you can see the, you know, the bed. This is the compost that I made, and uh, I think it's much better than the commercial stuff that I bought this year. So I'm going to have to stick with that from now on. Here's a quick look around. These are the eggplants. You can see they're pretty chewed up, but they're, they've got small eggplants on them. The peppers are totally loaded with peppers this year. Unbelievable. Beets and carrots are making a comeback from the deer. Uh, potatoes are a couple feet tall. It's, I've never seen them that tall before. And tomatoes are starting to look a little bit better. And let's go back. I'm going to grab my first zucchini of the year, too. Um, it's a little guy, but I'm going to really enjoy this for dinner tonight. So, you know, first zucchini and uh, probably about 10 to 15 pounds of garlic. I just couldn't believe it. So take a ride back up to go up to the house and there's the uh, all the butternut and the other squash doing good. 
And I just wanted to show you my apple trees. We have like the most apples I have ever seen on the trees. Now I don't spray them so they do have marks and stuff like that. But um, I just hope this drought lets up so that we do get decent sized apples. And the amazing thing is uh, trees are loaded but the deer haven't been up here eating the apples off them and chewing on them. So that's pretty amazing to me. So up to the house to get these ready to, to hang and dry. And you only want to take and wipe the dirt off. I, I just scrape any dirt off that I can get. Just work, you know, work around. At this point in time, I'm going to leave the, the roots on and the uh, stem intact for drying. So it takes a while, but you do not want to use water. You never want to wash them at this point because you'll just get water in the heads and you'll uh, cause rot and they won't store. So just, uh, you know, I'm just using my fingers and dig through those roots and, you know, get exact the most that you can out. You'll have a little bit, but that'll come out later once they're dry. And a wire basket isn't the best for uh, keeping a mess in, contained. So there they are all, you know, cleaned as good as I'm going to clean them for now. And uh, I just thought I'd show you some of my wife's lavender. This is the batch up by the house here, and I'll be showing you some of the stuff that she picked from the other... Um, bed down in the back soon but you know first thing I'm gonna do now is cut some pieces of string I'm gonna tie these up and hang them down in my root cellar you need to to hang them for about six weeks so that they uh, they get dry enough so that they'll store good and I'm just grabbing a handful of like six to eight of the bulbs and I'll put a couple wraps of string around them and just tie them into clumps like that now, from what I understand, the uh, stems actually do help a lot drying them, and that's what they look like. Now, I hang them upside down like that, but I think some people hang them the other way, and I'm not sure which way is best, but, you know, I've had no problem doing it this way. So I'm just going to get them all bundled up into little bundles there, and then I'm going to head down to the root cellar. And here you can see it's a uh, you know it's getting the full jars are getting low and there's all the empty jars all ready to be filled again so you know that's going to be another upcoming job soon as things start to mature in the garden. But um, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to hang them up on my vent pipes in there. Now this is the uh, this is usually the hot air exit pipe but right now I have all the valves closed and um, there's no air circulating from outside because it's really hot out there. And we got the air conditioner on inside, so it's nice and cool down here in the root cellar. So I just turn that little fan on in there. Instead of blowing the air out, it actually will blow it back through the little vent holes in the bottom of the pipe and help dry the garlic. Just keep air circulating and, uh, you know, help dry it quick. And you want to make sure you dry it in a dark area, too. So when I turn the light out in here, you know, it'll, all be, it'll just dry on its own. So now that that's done, I'm going to go up and my wife's got some lavender she picked from the back uh, batch of lavender. There you see my hens and chicks. They're all starting to um, sprout up some big things in the center. And those ground cherries are just unbelievable how, how they came back. But this is maybe about a tenth of what she's got growing down in the back. She, she picks some and she's going to start drying it. So first thing, same as the onions, just take some string and tie it up into bunches that you can hang. Now for the lavender, we actually um, hang it, just hang it in the garage, and that seems to work fine. It doesn't have to be in a dark place. And once you get it uh, dried, the there it is, hanging in the garage. The lavender will just fall right off the stems, and uh, you know you'll be able to use it. This is just a quick uh, flyby of last night after I got done watering.
I just thought I'd share today's garlic harvest with you and, you know, just show you it was just an amazing uh, crop this year. And uh, I guess the mild winter did make a really big difference in it. And it's all hanging. And in six weeks, I'll just cut the stems off and uh, pack it away in vented baskets. And, you know, just a little update on the lavender that my wife dries every year and makes big sachets for everybody out of. So that's all, you know, starting to dry now. And then, of course, I have to post a uh, video of a pork that we pulled. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.